ああ何もないだろう。ヤクザなんかなりたくてなるもんじゃねえ。ジュン、なんだ。もしかしてお前がヤクザになりたいの？ Evolution works in mysterious ways. RGG games went from looking like paper origami to being photorealistic and smooth around the edges. The combat went from claustrophobic beat em up button mashing with flimsy input detection to dynamic, unpredictable showdowns and sprawling open world replicas of Japan's finest prefectures. The characters change from being brute force, headstrong gorillas to compassionate, upstanding role models of video game heroes. It's the duality of man to be destructive en route to striving for self-improvement, which forms the basis for the central mystery of lost judgment, one of RGG's most interesting concepts. Seeking to understand how humans can be so smart and sensitive, yet so careless and cruel. Everybody needs a helping hand in life, a shoulder to cry on when the weight of the world is too heavy to bear. But we push each other away because it's easier expressing ourselves with fists rather than talking through tight throats and tears. Instead of communicating sensibly, we taunt and play mind games with one another, running away when confronted with serious subject matters. For the second game with this cast of characters from a different side of the law, RGG has brought a serious subject to its audience, to a series that is known for its over-the-top action and goofy go lucky charm. Drama is nothing new to Yakuza games, nor are the heartfelt moments. But here, broaching the real-life crisis of bullying and suicides, 
Lost Judgment steps outside of the wall of wackiness to attempt to appeal to the more sensitive nature of its players, asking for pause of thought to consider the real-world harm of being an asshole for shits and giggles. Lost Judgment is an occasionally thrilling throwdown adventure game and a rather by-the-numbers detective story. By that I mean to reference the clever, real-world data that we were given back in the first Judgment, to one about the unrelenting Japanese justice system with an overbearing 99% conviction rate. Along with this shocking statistic, we are given the horrific account of 300 suicidal children in Japan each year. I had to cross-reference the stat about the conviction rate to see if it was true, although the suicides don't surprise me even if, as most Westerners do, I consider Japan to be a happy place most of the time. It hits a bit close to home considering I too knew some kids that took their own lives for whatever reason or lack thereof that they had. It's always a cause for grief and frustration when some of our best and brightest are lost in such unfortunate and preventable ways. Other games have used these themes of a corrupt and incompetent justice system and schoolyard dickheads going unchecked to incredible effect, most notably Persona 5 and even Bully. But Lost Judgment puts its entire focus here, tackling the burden of responsibility of parents and teachers to safeguard children, while also examining the intersection of the rule of law and justice, and playing devil's advocate regarding retribution for those deeds that go unpunished. With such risky subject matter dealing with revenge and cancel culture at its core, Lost Judgment proves to be one of RGG's darkest and most daring games yet. They make so many games that they even now have sequels to their spin-offs, and Lost Judgment is one that no RGG fan should miss. In order to strive for the change we should want to see in the world, RGG enlists Takayuki Yagami, the lawyer, detective, MMA fighter, ass kicker running around in leather and skinny jeans, and his primal right-hand man, Masaharu Kaito to investigate a broken legal system and to restore order at Serio High, which might take the cake for being the most fucked up high school in Japan not named Shujin Academy. Yagami was a character that I had a warm reception for when I played the first Judgment game, especially since it was my first RGG game simultaneously. And although I still like him as a character, I find myself feeling more for Takuya Kimura-san as an actor than I do for Tabo this time around. Yagami in story scenes is a mild-mannered civilian born to play the straight man, lacking the flamboyant personality of Kaito and some of RGG's more notorious rogues. He makes up for this as a playable character by having arguably the most complete moveset of all of the protagonists in the Yakuza games thus far. Although Yagami proves to be one of the weaker characters RGG has read, which is saying something given how great the characters are across the board. His backstory, continuing from the first game, is one of the most intriguing out of all of them. Judgment Part 2 sees Yagami shine a light into the gray area at the center of conflicting moral choices, and that makes him a strong character, not to mention the raw star power of Kimura-san, the handsome devil that he is. Kimura's casting plays to his strengths as an actor, so I'm told. Even if the subdued performance doesn't exactly play to the strengths of RGG's direction. But then it wouldn't be a spin-off if Yagami felt like the same old Yakuza stereotypes that have been showcased time and again. What's most important is the gameplay still slaps with the same force as always. Yagami asserted in the first game that the job of a lawyer is not to find the truth, just to prove beyond reasonable doubt that the client is innocent. It's here in Lost Judgment that Yagami squares off directly with those who wish to bend the truth to their own will in order to make a mockery of a system that is impure and incapable of satisfying justice for all. We're given some of the most compelling antagonists in the series, villains that are empathetic and unhinged in equal measure. Sure, there are various holes in the logic of these characters and the plot is rather unbelievable at times, but these soap opera situational twists and turns keep us invested and stir us emotionally thanks to the raw power of performances and full motion capture that are as expressive as any that we've seen. The horror of discovering the pretty teacher slain 
battered and bruised after being caught in the crossfire of a murder mystery as one of the saddest moments in an RGG game and a great bit of irony that takes a slow burn story and dials the tension all the way up. The villains in Lost Judgment and the Kaito Files are some of the best in the series, giving us a lot to bite and chew from their storylines to their boss fights. Akutsu is like the young Kuze, annoying in the combat and never knowing when to quit, packing a powerful suplex that demands that we respect him. How did we not see this guy back when he was needed in the Tojo's heyday? Kuwana and Ehara make a great pair of bad guys with a layered master plan to carry out their version of personal justice. It's an intriguing tale that makes you think, as did the first judgment, about how society is content to live oblivious to the obvious cracks in our system that are so easy to expose and exploit. Yagami's beliefs are challenged as well, and we see a side of him as steadfast and stubborn as ever to illuminate truth on the victims left out in the cold and dark. Investigating Sawa Sensei's apartment during a crime scene, Yagami has to decide to skirt the regulations and take some evidence into his own hands. It takes a while to get going, but eventually Lost Judgment makes it clear that the boys are going places on a crash course collision for one of the wildest rides in the series. <laughs> Although you can always count on RGG to deliver a story worth your time, Lost Judgment is a bit uneven in its gameplay devices, with some bizarre, railroaded stealth sections designed by someone who clearly doesn't understand what makes stealth interesting. It's player choice, by the way. And the inclusion of generic and often frustrating climbing mechanics, as if we needed Yagami to cosplay as Nathan Drake undercover. You do, of course, get a few new gadgets to help you search for hidden items to approximate the simulation of detective capers, so I will give them some credit for trying to make it feel authentic. And of course we get Ronpo, who is cute. With the exception of Ronpo, these mechanics get thrown into Lost Judgment without much care, along with the return of the time-wasting tailing sections and the chases which are slightly improved from the last time but still not quite what this game needed in order to be unique. What makes an RGG game unique is the blend of comedy into situations that other lesser storytellers would settle on making into somber message movies. There's a somber and mature tone in Lost Judgment, yes, with some self-reflection from the Japanese developers about their own bullying crisis and even mild xenophobia that even the great Japan puts out into the world. But the game never feels sullen, like some of the false deities of the video game Critical Circle indulge in. Lost Judgment has comic moments and high-octane energy whenever they let you explore the world openly to find the weirdos and the clients in need of attention. Great examples of side content in Lost Judgment include the school reunion time capsule hunt, which includes a love confession debacle from a longtime virgin who gives up hope in the end and decides on visiting a soap land with his buddies to cope or the return of the otaku ninja gaijin Ryan Acosta, what? who wages a fierce war with a rival dojo <laughs> before succumbing to the influence of a woman and vowing allegiance to the ass and titties. The minigame, the dating minigame, has interesting short stories where we meet some vulnerable characters, go on some strange side quests, and top it off with heartfelt confessions. I like the DLC girlfriend's narrative of the school nurse, Kyoko Hakase, who adopts the orphaned cat Cherry when her owner dies in a car accident, and then the narrative comes full circle with Cherry saving the schoolgirl from a terrible accident of her own. There's the shy girl who doesn't want to come out of her shell until she realizes her talent as a stage performer, and the high school teacher who fights within himself to bottle the rage and contempt he has 
in order to be a guardian to his pupils. These adventures make the time spent in Yokohama feel different and give the school setting some spirit. Much of the time in Lost Judgment is spent doing the school story side missions, which are full of dialogue that I had a hard time keeping up with, and some repetitive and ultimately pointless minigames that I did not care for that had to be completed because we need that 100%. Although Amasawa was an interesting character as the young Sherlock that goes from accusatory to Yagami's understudy, the busy work that you have to grind out goes on far too long and in the opposite direction of what a Yakuza side mission should be, short and sweet with a comic punchline at the end. But a few of them were fun, like the Todoroki boxing gym side story that reminds us of how beautiful but limited boxing is as only one discipline of fighting as opposed to the ability to switch styles and mix martial arts. This is probably why Lost Judgment has so many claims to being the peak of beat-em-up in the series, because playing as Yagami feels like playing as an actual MMA fighter rather than just some street brawler with a few EX superpowers. Of course, the other games have great combat too, except for Koami 2, but Yagami lets you get a bit more aerial. Yagami is dangerous everywhere, from above or below. Switching stances across four different styles, skateboarding into suplexes, and ragdolling the bad guys around like the props that they are. It's the only Yakuza game that lets you tiger drop high school delinquents en masse, and it shows an evolution of the QTEs that I love that are, in my opinion, the true way of doing interactive movies. The charged up attacks that Yagami does are capable of breaking an enemy's guard whenever and wherever, giving more player choice and control in fights. Adding in the ridiculous extracts leads to a great deal of possibilities, and what other game lets you call in a support dog as cute as Ronpo to help you solve crimes and swat away the criminals? It's the strength of the combat variety and the storytelling that helps to redeem some of the uneven design choices in Lost Judgment and ensures the game is replayable as long as you enjoy this brand of brawling. Altogether, we're talking anywhere from 150 to 200 hours of content depending on how fast you can read dialogue. If you're a completionist, RGG is able to churn out games left and right by reusing assets, locations, and even dungeon layouts. At least it helps them to keep putting out new stories for us. But as someone that has over a thousand hours in this series now, a lot of this side content is exhausting at this point. Having to replay the same mini games for completion in every single Yakuza game is of course disappointing and obnoxious to us fans. Of course, for newcomers of the series, as I've said in the past, there's always something interesting that RGG will do in a new game to spice things up. And for a first-timer, most of these activities have some enjoyment if you choose to go for that platinum. For me, being on my sixth though, I'm hoping that the next games have some time-saving measures so I can get in, have a nice story, and get out with a platinum in less than a 100-hour shift. The add-on Kaito Files DLC was quite solid for about 8 hours worth of play, introducing one of the best and most attractive female characters in the series, as well as showcasing the charisma of Kaito on full display. The true final fight of Kaito Files is sad and funny, because this loner just wants love and a shot to earn it by beating Kaito to show that he's a real man. The headbutt fist breaker at the end is perfect for Kaito's and Yakuza style. Adding up all this content, mostly of the good quality variety, we're tallying up the final judgment on Lost Judgment as follows. Some of these scores are based on what I believe to be the holdover value that can be found in all of the other Yakuza games. It's not just about what is present, but how it is all used together. For example, I love the music, including the returning OSTs from the first game that has some unique tracks to it. But they are sparingly used here, and I like them more the way they were used in the first game. The same is true with the settings, which are detail and atmosphere rich, as always, but I've seen them all before. I try to be objective and rate Lost Judgment for what it does in and of itself. The game could have been much stronger than it was as a whole, but like almost all of the Yakuza games, Lost Judgment is good. We have a tendency to reject what's foreign to us. Let's continue to celebrate foreign games and cultures and take notes from RGG when their class is in session. So 
そうかもな<笑>まあいいやよくわかんねえことをうだうだ言ってもしょうが